it's Laura from SixFigureWritingSecrets.com and I've been talking a lot about Upwork lately mostly because many people are new to the site or they went to go sign up for Elance and have been routed over to Upwork and there are a lot of questions about whether the site is worth it, right? Because it's the merging of Odesk and Elance and it's also a new site unto itself. So if you're just getting started as a virtual assistant or a freelancer, you probably have questions about whether it's really worth your time. If you've spent any time on the site, it's pretty obvious that you're going to need to put in some work as far as creating a profile, competing with the other people on the site, and having bids that really stand out against the competition. So I wanted to put together this particular presentation to touch on whether it's worth your time to do that or not. This site is the merge completion of Elance and Odesk. So both of those sites had their pros and cons in the past. Very popular online job board sites. The way that it works is a client goes and posts a request for proposals. All kinds of jobs appear on sites like this. Requests for voiceovers, web development, web design, graphic design, virtual assistants, writers, sales, marketing funnel experts. All kinds of things are carried out on these sites. And the way that it works is the company pairs you up with a client once the client has selected your bid. Upwork takes a percentage of your earnings and you also pay a monthly membership fee for it. And then you're able to work with the client through the site. There's definitely benefits to it, but there are some downsides that I hope to be candid about. What makes the site great is that there's hourly work protection or escrow funding. So these are two different types of jobs. Both have benefits for you as the freelancer. If you use Upwork's tracking tool, you're going to get hourly work protection. That means that if there is proof in the form of screenshots taken of you working for the client, the client can't argue that you never did the work and Upwork will support you being paid by that client. That being said, there's sort of a downside with Upwork with they keep suspending client accounts for no reason. I had one client whose account was, account was suspended nine times before they finally gave up and said forget it about the project. So um, we were ultimately able to sort out that payment problem, but I say that with a word of caution because the hourly work protection, my response to that is, well, kind of. You know, if everything is set up properly on the client's end and the site hasn't randomly flagged the client to be suspended, then yes, you're protected. Escrow funding, another great thing. As a new freelancer, you're more than likely worried about scams, and you should be because there are plenty of people out there trying to take advantage of your lack of experience and get free work. Escrow funding means that when you initiate a job with a client on a fixed price basis, they're going to put the funds into Upwork's control until the job is complete. This gives you comfort, peace of mind, and knowing that the money's already been paid so you don't have to chase down the client completely if the funds um, haven't been released to you yet, but the client still does have to click to release those funds. If you don't, if your client disappears and you don't hear from them at all, there are options, but um, mostly you're still going to have to be relying on that client. That being said, it's great to know that the client at least has the money and that they've put it in the escrow account. For some reason, that just makes it a little bit easier to trust the client and for them to trust you too, because if there's a problem with the project in any way, they can get their money back relatively easily. It's also a great place to connect to wonderful clients for the short or the long term, simply because people tend to go to Upwork first. They know about Elance or they heard about Odesk and they'll be routed over to Upwork and they'll understand the reputation of the site. So a lot of times when small businesses or even a bigger agencies, organizations, nonprofits, entrepreneurs, when they're looking for someone to hire online, they will tend to go to Upwork first. There are some downsides though. Payments can be delayed by as much as six days. So this assumes that your client has already released the money to you, whether it's been automatically paid from your hourly project or the escrow has been released. Upwork holds it for six days. Kind of annoying when you may have finished the project two weeks ago, but that's just how it is. The site crashes all the time. Very difficult to toggle between your freelancer and your client account if you're using the site for both things. The site crashes and it's really difficult to get back to the screen that you were on previously. 
on Elance, when you would search for jobs, you'd enter a search term and then you could easily get back to that search if you saw something that interested you and you submitted a proposal. Upwork, for some reason, is not like that. If I was on page 11 of the search results and I submitted a bid, it takes me back to page 1 and I have to click back over to page 11. It's small things like that that might not seem like a big deal, but when you're a new freelancer and you're submitting a lot of bids, that can be really time consuming. And then of course, like any online job board, you do have your clients looking for rock bottom prices. They want to pay $5 an hour for something and you just have to ignore them. If you're a new freelancer or a virtual assistant, I recommend you ignore the bad jobs. It's going to be frustrating to see them. It's going to be even more frustrating to see that some people are submitting bids on those jobs. Just ignore them. Don't even waste your time with it. And then if you get personally invited to these jobs that aren't suited to you or they pay really poorly, just say no. Just decline. And I always tell the client that the budget is too low if that's the issue. More tips for succeeding on this site. Make sure that your profile and every pitch you send for a job is aligned to your ideal clients. You want to speak professionally to all clients because you never know whether they might come back and hire you down the line. Even though people who land on Upwork are already prepared to hire somebody, sometimes they might wait a month, they might wait a couple of months before coming back to hire you. It's especially true for bigger corporations that have to get budget approval and have to have somebody else look at your resume and speak to you. So you always want to speak professionally to your clients because even if you don't get the chance to work with them now, that could change in the future. Also, make it easy for your client to read your writing. This should go without saying, but I see a lot of proposals submitted to jobs that are just really unclear or they're too long and they talk only about the freelancer as opposed to the value that freelancer brings. You're going to face challenges when you're brand new on the site because you won't know how to price, right? You'll have very little work experience or reputation on the site. And there are so many people out there that it's hard to stand out when it's so competitive. But it is possible. To make it easier for clients to hire you, even when you're new, don't overwhelm them. Do not send them 20 links to your last web design project because they don't need that. They don't have time to look at it. Make sure you focus on what makes you unique from the others, even if somebody else has the edge of experience over you. And always give work samples and references that are top notch. I wish you a lot of luck and success on Upwork. If you use the site properly, you'll get a lot of benefits out of it. I used Upwork's predecessor, Elance, to launch my freelance writing career. And if you want more information specifically on how to get started on Upwork, I've got a free ebook over on my book over on my site sixfigurewritingsecrets.com to give you more information and help you get started as effectively as possible.